In Hebrews chapter 10, it says this in verse 32, remember those early days after you had received the light when you stood your ground in great contest in the face of suffering. Sometimes you were publicly exposed to insult and persecution. At other times you stood side by side with those who were so treated. You sympathized with those in prison and joyfully accepted the confiscation of your property because you knew that you yourselves had better and lasting possessions. So do not throw away your confidence for it will be richly rewarded. You need to persevere so that when you have done the will of God, you will be will receive what He has promised. For in just a little while, He who is coming will come and not delay. But my righteous one will live by faith. And if He, shr- if he shrinks back, I will not be pleased with Him. But we are not of those who shrink back and are destroyed, but of those who believe and are saved. Amen. Amen. The battle is the Lord's, the battle is God's, and we are on the winning side of all things. See, I, I, I know very, like, I, I know that there are battles that you're going through. I know that there's some people who are fighting big battles. I'd love you to close your eyes, and lift your hands before an incredibly powerful God this morning who knows exactly the battle you're going through, who knows exactly where you are in your life. He knows the weariness of your heart. He knows the arduous journey. And God is your ever-present help in in this time of need. And He rewards those who earnestly seek Him. So we're going to go back into this this chorus. We're going to proclaim God's incredible victory over the battles you're facing. We're going to fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of your faith. We're going to build your faith this morning in this next chorus. In Jesus' name. Come on, let's go back. Get it ready for me. Let's do it. Come on. Let's do this. All righty. Oh, Amen. Hey, it is so good to have so many young people in the house today. Welcome all the youth today. Hey, the youth just had a a fantastic youth camp. Give us a cheer from the youth wing if you had a good time. That's a moderately moderately good time. Hey, Sarah Pullman, do you want to come and... Welcome to Sarah Pullman to the stage. Our unbelievable youth pastor. Amazing youth leader. Incredible person. You got some... You got a posse too. I like it. Don't go anywhere alone. It's good. So for those that don't know, um, we have an incredible youth here. Same to you. This is Alicia, one of our connect group leaders. This is Isaac, um, our resident jokester. 
All right. <laughs> Everyone needs Do we have a, good time? a court jester. Yeah, it's good. Um, we've got to build our relationship with God. Nice. I like it. How does, how does worship go down with a uke? How does worship go down with a uke? Is that pretty good? Maybe Alicia we should... led worship last night. With a ukulele. We were out I love there. that. She was on yes. The that sounds and so good. There was just such a beautiful presence of God, like fireside, brick, like looking out over the Gold Coast. Come on. I love that. Such a beautiful job in ushering in the presence. Yeah. What was your highlight from him? Yeah, and going to the beach. Good. And you had a bit of an experience with God. Do you want to tell us about that? Um, I just I just it feeling like I was looking away Wow. Oh, come on. How precious is that? Isn't that precious? Yeah. It's so beautiful. Um, like we had uh, a few chapel moments and we had Dylan preach on, on Jesus over everything. So wow. Come on. We had the incredible Marina preach last night um, on miracles and expecting God to show up in our world. And it was just such a beautiful time. Oh, so, so good. Um, thank you for our team. Yeah. Johnny wants to say hi. You. And, and Danny. Our youth mascot, apparently. Hey, Danny. <laughs> I think Isaac was... Isaac's been, like, telling jokes all weekend. <laughs> <laughs> Keeping everyone laughing. And um, he was just... He was like, please let me tell a joke today. Tell a joke, buddy. Do you guys want to hear a joke? Yes, I do. Yeah, okay. That's great. <laughs> well done. Okay. Well, we're going to just pivot on a dime right now, and uh, we're going to pray. How about, how about everyone stand up to your feet? We're going to pray, because I'd love to pray for these guys and, and, and our incredible young people in this church, and we're going to take this opportunity to, to pray that, that God would move even just this morning as a wrap-up to our youth camp, and, and through this week as they go about their regular day, uh, their regular days. My God, bless these young people. My, thank you so much. Reach out your hand. Everyone, reach out your hand to these incredible young people in our church. God bless them. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, we thank you so much, God, for these incredible people. God, these incredible people that you've blessed our church with. My God, we, we thank you for the absolute potential that you've placed in their hearts, the design that you've got for them, for their lives. My God, we are so treasured by their pursuit of you. My God, we're so, so blessed, my God, by their love for you and their love for one another. My God, I pray that it only increases. God, as they, as they pursue you, Lord God, that we would see miracles, that we would see young people come to know Jesus. We would see schools on fire with the love of God. My God, do something wonderful in our young people in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, God, bless them. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Oh. Yes. Definitely, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. young people and Jesus. A big round of applause. Love you, man. Thanks for the jokes. Keep working on that. Thanks.
good. All right. Well, hey, have a seat, everybody. Take your masks off. Breathe deep. Breathe free. That's good. There's a good reason if any one of you are thinking about coming, becoming a drummer, it's a great reason to get a, become a drummer. You can sit down, no mask, bonus, breathe, breathe free. Surprised Monique's not sitting on the bass amp. You asked. <laughs> Who said no? <laughs> Slacking in church. It's good. Hey, can I, can I tell you a little, little story about one of the heroes of faith in the Bible as we've become, as we've become some time to give this morning? Let's open our Bibles. Uh, to Romans chapter 16. Now, um, it was so good the other night. We, a couple of weeks ago, actually, our Connect group met to celebrate the end of our Romans Bible study. We went out for a good old Roman meal at an Italian restaurant, and it was so good. And uh, all, the, all the guys around the table, and, and Joel unpacked Romans 16, which was our final chapter of Romans. And this, how's this for a, a great little mention in the Bible? I mean, if, you, if you're going to get... Who would love to be in the Bible? Who's, whose ego is that big? They're like, yeah, I, I wish I was in the Bible. I wish I got a mention. Yeah, you was born way too late. Born way too late. Okay, so, so Romans chapter 16, verse 10. How's this? Apelles gets a mention. Who's ever heard of Apelles, the great warrior of faith? No? No, this is, this is the only time he's mentioned in the Bible. I love it. This little shout out that Paul gives him at the end of Romans, in Romans chapter 16, it says, Greet Apelles, tested and approved in Christ. Tested and approved in Christ. I love to know the story here. Do you ever read the story and go, I'd love to know some of the backstory. You, 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 I think he glossed over this. Paul writes to the the Roman church and he says, Greet Apelles. I remember this guy called Apelles and I know what he went through. I know he went through some ridiculous stuff. I know that life was hard for him. I know that it was this time of testing for him, this time of, that he required great faith and great perseverance. Because life is tough, man. Isn't life hard sometimes? And Paul reaches out to the Roman church and says, you know what, I, I want you to, to let the Pelles know I couldn't send him a text message. That's not invented yet. I, I couldn't write him a letter. I just need to, I'm including it in this whole thing with you. But please just tell him that I know and, and God knows that, that he's tested and he's approved in Christ. I know the thing he's going through. I know that he's had to dig deep and persevere. And I want you to know that God thinks he is approved. Like, oh, isn't that a great encouragement? No, I don't know what he's going through. I don't know. The, whether it was a physical thing that he was, he was dealing with. I don't know if he had a massive persecution. I don't know if his whole family got rounded up and was put into prison or killed. I, I, I don't know. But, but regardless, whatever it is, I love the fact that we could put our own name in there. That, that we know that in Jesus, we are tested and approved. We are absolutely approved in Christ. That you stand here before Jesus right now and you are approved in Him. Because of the blood of Christ, there is nothing, there is no condemnation. There is nothing separating you. There is nothing pushing you out. There is no reason for you to feel uncomfortable in your chair this morning or feel tentative watching online because God approves of you because of Jesus. Everything that you ever did wrong, everything that you never did right is all washed away by His blood and you have a stamp of approval. And one of the reasons we know this, that we get to discover in our Connect Group next, I'm so excited, we're going to be doing Hebrews. It's so cool. We're going to to learn that even testing, the testing of God is a stamp of God's approval. The hard times are a stamp that God is is treating us as sons and daughters because He is preparing in us eternity. And so I want you to say today that not only do you know that you're you're approved by God, but if you're being tested by God, you're approved by Him even more. And so persevere. Keep going. It's arduous. It's hard. It requires grit and it requires a bit of grace. But God is with you. So don't give up turning up. Don't give up giving. Don't give up loving one another. Let's run the good race 
that He has set for us. And I'm so excited for Mal to come and expand on this so much more and when, he's, when he's preaching. But right now, let's give as a church. We're not a church who shrinks back. We're a church that perseveres in Jesus' name. Close your eyes and let, let's pray over all of our lives this morning. God, I thank you that you love all of us. And you love all of us in entirety. God, you love every part of us. And God, I thank you that you are our good Father. And you care for us. And you look after our every need. Bless us, Lord Jesus, with everything that we need throughout this week. We thank you that you approve of us. We thank you that you put perseverance in us. My God, be close to us. In Jesus' name, amen. Be blessed as you give, church. Now, I'm so excited that we get to celebrate and celebrate our Connect Group leaders this afternoon. We're having a, a really great lunch this, this afternoon at, at our place with our Connect Group leaders. I tell you what, if you're not in a Connect Group, that's the place to be. Your faith grows in community. Your faith grows as you get together with other people, doesn't it? And, and if, you're, if you're feeling capacity at the moment, you're feeling a call of God, you should lead a Connect Group. Like we've got some people who aren't in connect groups who really want to be in connect groups. There's no connect groups for them at the moment. And so why don't you put your hand up, gra grab another person, lead one together, come and see us afterwards. Join our connect group team. I think there's a couple, probably a couple of sp spaces at the lunch table for you today. If you want to sign up, extra perk. Give you some steak knives and a call of God. It'd be great. Hey, uh, another great, great thing coming up. Uh, and wearing fabulous tennis outfits this morning. We have Deb and Renee. Come and tell us about the tennis tournament. Come on, proper round of applause. Let's do this. All right. Hey, church. Good morning. This is what we wear every day. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> uh, we actually, yeah, we've got a tennis tournament coming up. So it is on the 9th of October, so it's in two weeks' time. It has um, arrived pretty quickly. And we want you to find a partner to play tennis with. If you don't have anyone, we can probably hit you up, pun intended, um, with a partner. But it's going to be super fun. So it's going to be starting at 1 p.m. and we'll go into the evening. So it is at Pete and Heather's house in Maudsland. And they do have lights on the court too. So it's, uh, we can continue for as long as we need to. There's lots of room for activities. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's good, it's good. So there's some posters around and we'll hand out some flyers as well and there's a QR code. So please scan it. So whether you are going to play or whether you're not going to play, either way, can you please fill that in so we know who's going to come because we're going to have a sausage sizzle as well. So awesome. Thank you. Fantastic. All right. If you're a single, love you to go and see them as well so you can court, you can feel the love. Regardless of whether you're 15, 30 or 40 love. Just, you'll find the love. That didn't really fly as well as I hope. Anyway, okay. Uh, it's all good. Leadership Community is coming up next week. It's going to be fantastic. Uh, online, 4 till 5 p.m. Uh, on a Sunday afternoon. And we have Pastor Steve White joining us to talk about how, building healthy relationships in your connect groups, in your teams. It's going to be incredible. We have a conflict resolution masterclass. And uh, we're going to have some really good fun. Uh, with a funny quiz as well. It's going to be good. So please come and see us. We got, we'll send out the links this week. We'll make sure you're there and have a, have a good time with us. And um, I reckon it's about time we stand up. We worship God together before Mal comes and preaches an incredible word on faith. Let's do this.
wonderful Jesus. Oh, Lord, we thank you for your presence today. We thank you, Jesus, that we can connect with you. We can, we can come into your presence each and every week, each and every day. And, Lord, you just pour out on us your love, your peace, your kindness. And you pour into us things like perseverance that keep us going, that keep us pressing on. And you pour into us a compassion and a love for others that goes beyond anything we could possibly imagine. I just thank you for it, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Good morning, everybody. Why don't you take your seats and take those masks off? We're all on the same page. Um, I'm so blessed. Thank you so much, band. Good band, a big round of applause. They're the best. I get, I get to have the first week where everybody's actually, I can see your faces, which is good. <laughs> Sorry to the rest of you. You, got, you guys can press through uh, better than I can. We're going to talk about big, bold faith today. And uh, when I think about big, bold faith, um, I think probably about the life of faith. And I think about the day in, day out, living out your faith and holding on to it and keeping it going and going and going and going. So that's what I reckon big, bold faith is. And so we're going to, we're going to dig into that. One of, the, one of the best guys that I can think of um, who who understood that was the Apostle Paul, yeah. wrote most of the New Testament. Um, the guy um, had, had great, great highs, and he had great, great lows. And even in his greatest low, um, he, he ended up, uh, he, he was in prison for a while in a nice little country villa in Italy. All right? So he had a bit of time in one of those. And then towards the end of his life, the country villa turned into a prison cell. And in the prison cell, he was writing to this young guy, Timothy. And Timothy was, was a young up-and-comer. He, he was a preacher in a local church. And um, he, he thought, what are the words that I can give to Timothy before, before I'm put to death? So he's basically, he was on death row, waiting until his last. Um, but he, and he wouldn't quit writing letters. He wouldn't quit just telling people, you know, you can, you can press on, you can persevere, you can do this and that. And um, Paul says these words in 2 Timothy 4.7 says, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race and I've kept the faith. I have fought the good fight. I've finished the race and I've kept the faith. And um, the race at the, at the time, you know, they, they, they knew about the Olympics back then. They, were, they, they had already had those, those events going on and so they had people running, not with clothes on, but they, they had people running. Um, and so Paul likens the life of faith to a race. He likens it to, to um, you know, basically, you know, that's, all, that's it really. Likens it to a race. And um, it's really interesting. The writer of Hebrews, some people think it's Paul, but they always call it the writer of Hebrews. He actually talks about a whole heap of people that went before that ran a race. And um, I always find it quite daunting. So you start to read the Bible and you start to go, wow, those people... Are really amazing. How could I ever measure up to that? You know, like how. <laughs> so here's here's a few examples. This comes from Hebrews chapter 11, uh, starting in verse 32. I'm going to skip over some of them because there was a lot, and they had this massive list. And you, and you kind of, if you want to get inspired, um, which is one way of putting it, um, you, you can go into there. But um, it does take a little bit of a turn, so uh, just wait for it. How much more do I need to say? It would take too long to recount the stories of faith of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, David, Samuel, and all the prophets. By faith, these people overthrew kingdoms. They ruled with justice and received what God had promised them. They shut the mouths of lions, quenched the flames of fire, and escaped death by the edge of the sword. Their weakness was turned to strength. They became strong in battle and put whole armies to fight, flight. Women received their loved ones back, to, back again from death, but others were tortured, refusing to turn from God in order to be set free. They placed their hope in a better life after the resurrection. Some were jeered at, and their backs were cut open with whips. Others were chained in prison. Some died by stoning. Some were sawed in half, and others were killed with a sword. Some went about wearing skins of sheep and goats, destitute and oppressed and mistreated. 
And this, this next line always messes me up. So that's, that's the big picture of the life of faith. They were too good for this world. Wandering over deserts and mountains, hiding in caves and, hole, uh, and holes in the ground. They were too good for this world. So they talk about the life of faith and kingdoms and da 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 and then they talk about these guys that, that live lives that, that were the complete opposite of the glorious riches of everything, right? And I think in our culture, those things we don't want to talk about. We want to talk about the, the amazing things. And I think God is saying to us, you know what? They're all faith. There, there, there's not, you don't not have faith because, because you're, being, you, you know, you, you're being tortured, right? Which is a sad thing to say, but yeah, you don't not have faith. But what I, I do notice that is the same theme is that they all have faith in God no matter what their circumstance is that they're going through. They all persevere in faith, no matter what the circumstance. Whether their 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 circumstances that that um, you know they, they need this promotion or whatever, or their circumstances that they are suffering and struggling, they all place their faith in God and they all hop into the lane in the race where they're following after Jesus, the author and the finisher of their faith. You know, um, I, I I think everyone, and I think Jesus would agree with this as well. Everyone has a measure of faith, right? Everyone has faith. And I, uh, I was driving down the motorway the other day and I'm watching all this construction going on and seeing these big marvels of engineering and all that kind of stuff and I'm going, well, somebody somewhere had the faith to believe that this, this big thing would happen and then they, they believed in it, they presented it to somebody, here's my vision, and it happened, right? They, they, they threw all the money at it and, and, and it happened. These big marvels of engineering like the Q1 and all that kind of stuff, somebody somewhere had this idea in their head and they said, you know, this is it. I've got a measure of faith. I believe that, that when, I, when I bring this idea into being, that building will be, you know. And, and so I think um, the question is, are we keeping the faith? Because everyone's got faith. And we always put our faith in something. And I think um, one thing that I wonder about is that how, how are we running that race that is set before us? What, why do we need to keep the faith? And I think we're faced in this world with a, with a couple of things. And I think one, one of the main problems that we have is we jump out of our lane and start to, start to run in a lane that isn't, isn't our own. We start running after somebody else. We start looking at people. We, we, we've got this faith in comparison. So we actually start, you know, and our whole entire culture at the moment has been upended by our faith in comparison. We've got young people here that are dealing with faith in comparison in their de- de- developmental years right, and, and, and comparing themselves to each other and then just getting steamrolled by this just flood of comparison. And it's a struggle, but we're, we're running in this lane and we're looking at other people. We're just watching after those other people. Why have they got that? How come they got a promotion before I did? They've been here five minutes. They're running in this lane. Oh, um, oh, wow. You know, they have photographs by the pool every day. Why can't I? You know, I'm over here struggling like, Ugh. and over, over here, it's the best thing. Wow, their house. Oh my gosh. How? Why? What am I doing wrong? You know, it's, it's, it's so we've got this um, huge comparison trap, I think. We're just looking around at everything. Um, they're on a really nice holiday again. <sighs> so awesome that they can't go overseas at the moment. So I'm still running in the wrong lane, right? Anyway, so whose lane should we be in? Well, the Bible says in Hebrews 12 too that we look unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and he sat down at the right hand of the throne of God, and in a few minutes, I'll be giving people the opportunity to allow Jesus into their lane as well. So look out for that one. Um, another thing that we do um, is that we put faith in things like anxiety. And then we start to get these things like anger and fear and worry and catastrophizing and negativity and depression and retreating and isolation and all of those things that go together. We're starting to put our faith, we're starting to run in this anxiety lane. We're looking at this anxiety and going, oh, yeah, I can't see anything else, you know. I'm looking at all that, that, that kind of stuff going on. 
I'm not in Jesus' lane, I'm in my anxiety lane. And, um, you know, we get into this, these places like, I don't understand why they're so annoyed at me. You know, what's going on? Um, um, am, am I listening? What a strange question to ask. It's an odd way to start a conversation. Um, and we end up saying things that we don't mean. We're, we're in a conversation where, and, and we're, we're kind of full of doubt and we're starting to just, just, just up and, upend everything and we create these little cycles where we say something that we don't mean because we're in the anxiety lane and then the other person goes, goes, well, I don't understand why they're saying that. All right? And then they get anxious about it and then they start to say things that the, the, and it starts going round and round and round and round. And um, what we really need to do is realise that the problem is not the problem. And the answer is usually not the answer. And for blokes, that's a really tough one because, um, you know, I don't want to be sexist or anything, but we, like, want to fix the problem. Right? We want to sort it out now. Right? Let's just solve it right, right here, here and then. But unfortunately, the problem's not the problem and the answer's not the answer. And um, we, we need to really jump in and keep the faith. And we need to realise one thing, and I, and I love this verse, in Hebrews 11.1, um, 1, it says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And it jumps over into verse 3 as well. And it says, By faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that the things which are, are seen are not made of the things which are visible. So when we're in a situation in a relationship where we are, we are hearing something from somebody else, that's not what's there. And we need to actually jump in and, and into God and actually jump out in faith and actually go, hey, hey, hang on a minute. That's not actually what's, what's going on here. What's really going on is that there's anxiety at play. There's, there's all these things. People are running in the wrong lane. And we just need to step over and get in the right lane and start to go, okay, okay God, what do you want to do? What do you want to say in this situation? What is your way in this situation? What is your... What, where, where are we going to go here? So keep the faith. Keep the faith. All right. I'm trying a new note, note technique. So I'm, I'm, I'm getting there. Doing a, doing a good job, actually. It's working out well for me. It's actually not a page. I've done a mind map. It's going everywhere. Um, so obviously we're all, we all know there's a problem. We all know there's difficulties. We all know there's struggles. And um, I wanted to, Josh said, Josh said, look, can you be really, really practical? And I said, okay, I'm going to take you up on that one, Josh. So what are some of the practical things that you can do to stay in your lane? All right, so these, these things I'm about to tell you, you may want to write down notes. Uh, you may already know them, but I have got a number of different, uh, a, a, a huge list of practical things we can do. I'm going to start off with a few quotes, though. Um, just recently, I was, I was doing a devotional series, and Ryan Gilbank, a friend of uh, mine from up in Mackay, anyone know Ryan? Yeah, a couple of people know Ryan. Good, real good bloke. He said, our, I don't know if it, this was his quote, but I'm just going to give it to him. Um, our minds are like Google. They find what they search for. Whoa. Um, and Dr. Carolyn Leaf says this, whatever you think about grows. So don't focus on what you were going through. Focus on what you were going to do. All right? Um, James actually puts that in a different way. Um, he says, for, for as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead. Well, so we've got to do something. If we want to live the life of faith, if we want to keep the faith throughout the whole of our lives, we need to do a few things. So um, Hebrews 12.1 says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that so easily ensnares us and run with endurance the race that is set before us. So um, I reckon the life of faith is created by moments. And every little moment, and, and in terms of, of putting aside weights, we've probably got to ask ourselves, who is Jesus Lord of? And I'm going to ask two questions. Is Jesus Lord of your time? And is Jesus Lord of your technology? Is Jesus Lord of your time and is Jesus Lord of your technology? Because one of the, the problems of our age, I think, has been that Jesus hasn't been Lord of our technology and unfortunately that then makes it that Jesus isn't Lord of our time and there is a very, very big distinction. I'm going to leave those questions hanging in the air there. 
Um, another really help, uh, first of my really helpful tips is build rituals. Now, back in the old days, um, throughout time immemorial, um, people built rituals, right? And they had ritual after ritual after ritual um, throughout the church. I, when I was growing up in church, I was like, oh, stuff those rituals, I don't want them. You know, that's too traditional and stuff. Let's just get in the spirit and go for it. No, rituals are awesome because what they do is they, is they get in your way and, and make you do stuff and give you habits. And if they're the right rituals, and really if you've put in place those rituals, you're more likely to want to, want to follow them. You, you usually don't like it when you're following somebody else's rituals, but we do rituals all the time. We're all very ritualistic. Um, one of our rituals is that at our dinner table, we've got one of those little devotion books, and every single night we will do a devotion. All right? And if we don't, at least at the very minimum, we will say, right, one of you needs to pray. Sometimes we'll go around the table, all of us will pray, but one of us needs to pray. But that's a ritual. Every single night, it's just going to happen. All right? And so even, even, even when we don't have the time or whatever, we just say, right, well, someone's at least got to pray. All right? And even if it's, dear God, thank you for my family, and da, 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 it's still built into the ritual and it's still happening. Right? And, and it's this consistent le- level of moments to build your faith. What about this one? Be filled with the Holy Spirit, Ephesians 5.18 says, um, and make music to the Lord in your hearts. So I, um, I sometimes, when I'm getting all negative and I'm in my wrong lane and I'm getting anxious and looking at other people and getting the comparison trap, um, I've, I've had times where I've been driving to work and I've gone, no, stop it. And I've turned around and I've gone, and I've gone thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for, for the people that are in my life. Thank you for my job. Thank you for this. And I, and I, and I get in this, in, in, in this spirit. I start to, start to pray in the spirit and ask God to just bless the, the work of my hands, bless things that are, that are going on the day, bless the people I come in contact with. And without fail, I actually now can't think of a time ever where that day hasn't been the most amazing day ever. All right? It's just been sensational. It's been excellent because I've put my heart in the right place where I'm actually walking in faith and, and, and thinking about that. All right? So do that. Um, be filled with the Holy Spirit. Get journaling. I dug this up out of the bottom drawer. All right? And as you can see, the, there's, there's, we're, we're a few pages in here. All right? um, I've even got one in here on what I'm preaching about today, which I read, and I was like, you're kidding me, running the race. Right? There it is. All right, here, 1 Corinthians 9, 26 to 27. Therefore I run, this, uh, run thus, not with uncertainty, thus I fight, not as one who beats the air, but I discipline my body and bring it into subjection, lest when I have preached to others, I myself should become disqualified. Uh, now, I, I wrote this, I got in a journal, um, and it, this is the SOAP method, so scripture, observation, application, prayer, um, but it's, it works. It's like I had a friend of mine years ago just say, just say it's actually Ben Notoko, years and years and years ago, um, said, said to me, um, do you want God to speak to you? Just grab a scripture every day and write it down. God will speak to you, trust me, all right, every single day. Um, but there's, um, I, I was listening to a digital audio book called uh, Digital Minimalism this week, which is really interesting, and uh, you should get a hold of it and have a look at it um, because it's one of these things where it's not, it's not like get rid of all your technology. It's no, 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 let's get... Let's, let's temper back our technology to the point where we actually base it on our values rather than base it on something else. So you do do a little bit of a detox, but then move into it. I haven't done the detox yet. Uh, but <laughs> Well, I've done a few things. I cut my, um, cut my social media accounts down to like a five-minute thing on screen time, and it's been great. I was just like, okay, well, five minutes is up. All right, I'm out. Um, so, but get... Um, what the guy said in the book is he said guys like Lincoln and all these people in the past, they actually kept a journal and that actually helped them to consolidate their thoughts and make huge decisions about the fate of, of, of the nation and all that kind of stuff. And it's a, it's a great thing anyway. So there's a practical. Grab a journal, even a digital one, and literally write down a scripture a day and, and, and what, do you, what do you think God's saying to you? You don't have to get all super technical about it. Uh, super practical way of keeping the faith. Get together with people that fire you up. Now, Josh is talking about connect groups, uh, perfect way. Uh, church, um, I've even been on version. I mentioned that before with Ryan. On version, they've got these plans that you can share with other people. And at the end of it, it actually asks you, well, what, are you what, what is God saying to you today? And you get to read what God's saying to other people. And I have um, been so blessed by other people having my struggles. 
Like, you know, like <laughs> they're going, well, this scripture is really challenging me and I, I struggle with blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, so do I. I'm not in it on my own. That's a good way to keep the faith. Um, and um, last of all, and probably most important of all, find a need and fill it. I think one of the traps of our society is it's like it's, it's too easy to say, oh, no worries, I'll pray for you, all right? which is great. Don't get me wrong. But we need to be finding needs and filling them. We need to be seeking them out. Um, we, we need to find a person to empower, really. All right? go, go out find a person to empower. Um, think about your children, your family, your community. Um, you know, we, we need to be keeping the faith everywhere that we go and, and, and finding people that we can just speak into. So, I mean, they're, they're my big practical tips. And really to close off, um, in terms of running your race, many, many years ago I heard this story about um, this, this young man called Eric. And uh, a friend, friend of mine who I know really, really well, um, actually Renee knows him, Mark Gladman, um, he, he was, he's a singer, musician, all that kind of stuff, and we, we really connected when I was really young, um, you know, in my te- late teenage years. He went over to the United States and um, stayed with his family um, who had a son named Eric. And there's all these photos up, and there's these. The, he he was a runner, and he had the you know, and they there were the running shoes in his room, and 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 there was all these photographs of him all all around the place. But Eric wasn't in the house, because what had happened um, pr- fairly recently, I think, um, when my mate was over there, was that um, Eric had been um, working at um, at some place where he was taking these big cylinders of of plastic wrap or something like that off off of a truck, and one of those cylinders had actually come off and hit him in the head and killed him instantly. And Eric's folks had to deal with that, of course, and it's pretty harsh, very hard. But uh, Mark actually took that and, and, and took the story, and the, and the family had actually, had actually um, dealt with it and, 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 and had spoken to you know, the kids around the area and all that kind of stuff about doing this one thing, about taking Eric's running shoes and putting him on and running the race for him. Because he couldn't finish the race. But you can. And um, that story has stuck with me, as you can tell, forever. And uh, my friend Mark even wrote a song about it. You get him to play the Eric song one time. Um, and the words were put on Eric's shoe. Uh, some of you can't understand. That's because you just don't know what God has planned. But one of these days I'm going to take Eric's hand and we'll be together in the promised land. And um, I might leave you sitting today. I would normally get you to stand up, but I'd prefer if you just um, don't have your mask, uh, mask today and break in tradition a bit. But if you can just bow your heads and close your eyes. And maybe you're here today and we've talked about the life of faith and we've talked about keeping the faith. But maybe today you haven't even got on the blocks or maybe you, you've, you've kind of fallen out of the race injured and you want to get back in the race again and you want to be in that race of faith. Maybe you want to pick up Eric's shoes and run the race for him. And what I'm trying to say is if you don't know Jesus in this place this morning, if you you don't know the life of faith that I'm talking about, this wonderful, glorious faith, I'd love it if you'd respond today. I'd love it if you'd say, hey, Jesus, I want to pick up those shoes and I want to run that race. And if um, if there's anyone in this place that wants to make that decision today, if there's anyone online who wants that make that decision, make sure you reach out in the chat as well uh, because God has a great plan and a great purpose and a great destiny for you. Jesus wants to be Lord, your Lord and your Saviour. He wants to, to um, be with you in that race and help you to finish the race strong and say, I have kept the faith. So if there's anyone, I'll give you a few moments. Who wants to receive Jesus today? to run that race and if you're far from God today and you want to you get back in that lane reset your eyes on Jesus why don't we all pray together dear Jesus thank you Lord dying on the cross for me.
Thank you, Lord, for taking away my sins. I ask you today to be my Lord and my Saviour. In Jesus' name. Amen. Wonderful. Well, if you prayed that prayer online, if you prayed that prayer in here, um, you're on that faith journey. You've either started it or you're continuing it. And it's always good to have a reset and to focus on Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. And that brings me to the finish. God bless you. He's encouraged by that. Oh, it is so good. Thank you so much, Mel. Like those, those rituals, they're good. Rituals, uh, I mean, you do habits every day. You brush your teeth every day. You should do. Right, yeah. They're good. They, they keep us clean. They keep us healthy. Hey, let, let me encourage you with this, this word from Hebrews, just as we wrap up. It says, Therefore, brothers and sisters, since we have confidence to enter the most holy place by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way opened for us through the curtain that is his body, and since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us draw near to God with a sincere heart in full assurance of faith having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience and having our bodies washed by pure water. Let's hold unswervingly to the hope we profess, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how we may spur one another on towards love and good deeds. Let us not give up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but let us encourage one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. God bless you as you spend time in your connect groups this week, as you spend time with your family, developing good, healthy habits that build faith in your lives. I hope, I'm praying that you have just a, a phenomenal week as you do so. Meet with your connect group, gather a connect group, come and start a connect group, and let's, let's push one another towards Jesus. God bless you. Hey, thanks so much for joining us online today. Have a fantastic week following Jesus.